A Song of Ice and Fire book series by George R. R. Martin is one of my favorites. It obviously takes a lot of inspiration from real history. The War of Five Kings is clearly inspired by the War of the Roses, and there are many characters who have direct historical analogues in that era. However, this is not a channel about medieval British history. But luckily for me, George Martin is a fan of Roman history as well. How do I know this? Well, he had cats called Augustus and Caligula. But it is also apparent from his works. His novels have a lot of both events and characters, which seem to be taken directly from the pages of the Roman history books. In the events department, George seems to rely more on the Byzantine period. The Battle of Blackwater is the most obvious example. The wildfire is clearly the Greek fire with minor alterations, and the chain that traps Stannis' fleet in the Blackwater Bay reminds of the chain across the Golden Horn. In this video, however, I wanted to talk about the character inspirations. On this topic, we have a confirmation from the author himself for at least one character. George Martin said that Stannis Baratheon is based partially on Tiberius. At first, this comparison didn't seem right to me. Sure, they are both gloomy and brooding, but for Stannis, the defining trait is his sense of duty, which doesn't really seem to apply to Tiberius, who often shirked his imperial responsibilities and retired away from Rome. However, another interview with George helped me better understand what he meant. Who are your influences for Stannis Baratheon? <clears throat> is he based on anyone from history, literature, or politics? Um, to some extent, he is, he is uh, inspired by Tiberius Caesar. Um, not necessarily, partly to Tiberius Caesar from history, but to a great extent by Tiberius Caesar as portrayed um, by, um, God, I'm blanking on the actor's name, Baker, I believe, uh, in I, Claudius, the incredible British TV series I, Claudius, George Baker, I believe it was, yes, uh, played Tiberius in that, and uh, there are significant differences too, but... Um, so the character of Stannis is based on Tiberius himself and the portrayal of the Emperor in the 1970s British TV show I, Claudius. The show itself is based on the books I, Claudius and Claudius the God by Robert Graves. If you haven't watched the show or read the books, I advise you to do either or both. They are very interesting and entertaining, and they certainly help me get a better grip on the Julio-Claudian family tree. Graves' novels are based on the writings of Suetonius, which in itself isn't the most objective of sources, but they do offer some very convincing portrayals of historical characters. Before going ahead, I need to warn you. There are spoilers for the books from A Song of Ice and Fire series and the Game of Thrones TV show, also for the show I, Claudius and the corresponding books. But if you are familiar with the story of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, there is very little to be spoiled for you from those. Now, with this out of the way, we can proceed. So, how similar are the characters of Stannis and Tiberius? Their most obvious similarity is the one that I've already mentioned. Pliny the Elder describes Tiberius as the gloomiest of all men. Stannis is also known as a brooding and humorless man. I have to mention, however, that despite numerous descriptions of Stannis as unlikable, George can't help but write him in a way that makes the reader sympathize with the character. Stannis has some of the best jokes in the books and has a lot of fans among the readers, so I think this similarity only applies partially. The characters around Tiberius and Stannis provide a more substantive similarity. First, let's consider their closest confidants. Stannis has Sir Davos and Lady Melisandre, while Tiberius has his spiritual advisor Thrasyllus and his mother Livia. These pairs basically have the same traits, but they are divided differently. Both Melisandre and Thrasyllus are foreigners who deal in prophecies, but as a character, Melisandre is closer to Livia. They both employ unsavory means and act on their own accord to bring their favorites to power. Graves' version of Livia is also convinced that Tiberius is destined to rule because of the prophecy. Oh, not that old chicken story again! Like Melisandre in George R. R. Martin's books, she works to remove anyone standing between her favorite and the throne. Thrasyllus and Davos are portrayed as being genuinely loyal to their lord, although it is up to debate how loyal was the real-life Thrasyllus. Stannis and Tiberius trust their male advisors, even though their relationships aren't without hiccups. Other character relations of Stannis and Tiberius also show similar patterns. They both have strained relationships with their predecessors, Augustus and Robert Baratheon. God, did he look what your son did to my daughter? Now what kind of a man is that? Tell me! I've never liked him, never! He's your son, really, but I have to tell you, I've never liked him! And I declare upon the honor of my house that my beloved brother Robert left... Wasn't my beloved brother? I didn't love him. 
You didn't love me. A harmless courtesy at first. A lie. Take it out. They both had brothers who were more popular than them, Robert and Renly for Stannis and Drusus for Tiberius. However, the Roman Emperor had a much better relationship with his brother than Stannis did with his two. When Drusus fatally injured himself falling off his horse, Tiberius rode day and night to be with his brother. When Drusus died, Tiberius returned his body to Rome, walking in front of it on foot all the way. It is impossible to imagine anything like this for Baratheon brothers. Stannis admits that he used to have some affection for his brother Renly, but by the time of the events in the books, it is long gone. Both Stannis and Tiberius are accomplished military commanders. The fictional character is praised for his victories against the Greyjoys and the Wildlings, while the Roman campaigned successfully in Armenia and beyond the Danube before becoming the Emperor. They both achieved their success through strict discipline. I say that your drills were bloodless battles, and your battles were bloody drills. And in this, they differ from their more popular relatives, who seem to be a natural inspiration for their soldiers. Stannis had his brothers, who were beloved by the soldiers they commanded and the people they ruled. Tiberius had his brother Drusus and his nephew Germanicus, who seemed to have been as naturally charismatic as Robert or Renly. The characters' relationships with their wives also have some similarities. Neither Tiberius nor Stannis is particularly close to his spouse. The reasons, however, are different. Tiberius was forced to divorce his first wife, Vipsania, whom he genuinely loved, and marry Julia, the daughter of Augustus. Julia was a known adulteress, and her and Tiberius were a complete character mismatch. Tiberius resented her because of her behavior, not because of his own personality. Stannis and his wife Selyse are a different case. They also don't share much affection, but this is simply a consequence of the fact that Stannis has little interest in women, and views sex simply as marital duty. Now, Graves also portrays Tiberius as creepy and perverted, which is based on the stories from Suetonius. I am not going to give you details here, because that is sure to break some of the YouTube's rules. If you want to, you can read them yourselves, but I wouldn't give those stories a lot of credence. Suetonius writes from the perspective of the senatorial class, whose members had little love for Tiberius. The feeling was mutual, and Tiberius instituted more than one purge of the senators throughout his reign. After his death, he was not given the same honors as Augustus, and a lot of his acts had been nullified. It is yet to be determined how Stannis' story will end in the books, but the mutual disdain and distrust between him and aristocracy is a trait that he certainly shares with Tiberius. The family similarities between the characters do not end there. Another pair of characters with mirroring personalities are Stannis' nephew and Tiberius' grandnephew, Joffrey and Caligula. Both are psychopaths with a knack for acting friendly before revealing their true nature as monsters who revel in torturing their subjects. Interestingly, Joffrey's personality is not the only contribution by Caligula. George R. R. Martin also took one of Caligula's famous quotes, You only had one neck, I'd hack it through. altered it slightly and gave it to Stannis in The Winds of Winter, the sixth book of the series which has a non-zero chance to be released at some date in the future. They also both tend to reside on an island, Stannis on Dragonstone and Tiberius on Rhodes and Capri, although the reasons for their seclusion away from the capital are different. For Stannis, Dragonstone serves as the main base of operations. Tiberius, on the other hand, retires to the islands to avoid his imperial responsibilities. However, both would certainly prefer seclusion to the scheming of the capital city. When it comes to character traits of Stannis and Tiberius themselves, there are as many similarities as there are differences. Both Stannis and real-life Tiberius are thrifty and frugal. Stannis criticizes Robert for his feasts and tournaments that the realm cannot afford, and Tiberius is known to have left a full treasury upon his death. Despite both of them being generally distrustful and cynical, their attitudes towards governing differ significantly. Early in his reign, Tiberius had some republican aspirations and wanted the Senate to have more power than it had under Augustus. Only after realizing that the senators didn't actually want the responsibility of governance did he become disenchanted with those ideals. The longer he reigned, the more he came to resent the politics of the capital. He became more reclusive and retired to Capri, leaving the city in the hands of his Praetorian prefect Sejanus. The episodes of him actually caring about the affairs of the state become more rare towards the end of his reign. Stannis, on the other hand, is portrayed as a dutiful, albeit not very cheerful, ruler. His drive towards the throne is motivated primarily by a sense of responsibility, and not by a personal ambition. I think in the same circumstances, Tiberius would have been happy for someone to relieve him of the burden of governance, but Stannis persists against the odds and the expectations of his opponents. 
The character of Stannis takes a lot of inspiration from historical Tiberius and his portrayal in literature and television, but he is not a carbon copy of him. The similar aspects are mostly in their surroundings and not in the character's principles or convictions. I hope this video provides enough insight into how similar and yet different the two characters are. If there is enough interest, I'm going to make another one about the rest of the book characters, who are clearly inspired by the Julio Claudians. The cultural legacy of Rome shows not only directly in its artifacts, but also in the motifs of modern storytelling, and it is an interesting topic to explore. If you can think of any other piece of modern culture that takes an indirect inspiration from Roman history, please tell me in the comments. And as always, thanks a lot for watching till the end, and I will see you in the next one.